Ah, California, where a man's over the top Halloween lights display is drawing some major attention. It's near San Francisco, built of thousands of lights, time to the song Nightmare Before Christmas. The man behind the extravagant light show spends months planning and crafting it. I wonder if he'll do the same for Christmas. This looks like quite the project. Enjoy. Now here, David and Cindy. Thank you, Greg. Coming up on the news at six, a man was caught in between two machines at Shaw Industries in Dalton and lost his life. We're taking a look at past OSHA incidents at that company. And later at six. Pumpkins will soon be replaced by Christmas trees at most roadside stands, but will they cost you more because of last year's drought or even the last recession? I'll have the story. And a child was hit by a car in Chattanooga. We're live on the scene with new developments as Eyewitness News at six starts now. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. Thank you for watching Channel 3. I'm David Carroll. And I'm Cindy Sexton. Chattanooga police are looking for the driver who hit a child. And Channel 3's Tanisha Cordell is live from the scene of the incident. This was on Dodson Avenue in Chattanooga about uh, two or three hours ago. Tanisha, who can people be on the lookout for? And fled. David, Chattanooga police are looking for a suspect driving a sedan with tinted windows. Now, as you said, the call came in around three this afternoon, and again, a child was hit. We're told they received a non life threatening head injury. Now, details are extremely limited at this time, but as police continue investigating, we will keep you updated with more information as it becomes available. Now, I think it's a good reminder to keep in mind trick or treating kicks off soon if it hasn't already in some different areas. So, drive Drivers, please be mindful of that. Keep an eye out for kids walking and crossing the streets tonight. It might be a good idea to also slow down in residential neighborhoods. Also, maybe even go below five, um, this posted speed limit, just to be safe. For now, live in East Chattanooga, Tanisha Cordell, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Tanisha, thank you. It's been a year and a half since a young mother was found dead in Grundy County. Police still have no idea who's behind the crime. Samantha Chandler's family wants answers and closure. And tonight they're sharing their story with Channel 3's Natalie Potts and hope that someone out there knows something that can help solve the murder. 26 year old Samantha Chandler went missing from her grandmother's house around midnight, April 31st, 2016. The very next day, deputies found her body near a remote trail in the Ross Creek area. And while her death is being investigated as a homicide, no arrests have been made. Tonight, family members are pleading for anyone with information to come forward. She was a bubbly, loving, um, happy girl. She had the contagious giggle that everybody loved. Family members describe Samantha as a sweet, loving daughter, sister, and young mother who loved life. It's been a lot of tears, um, a lot of upset not knowing what happened to her. She was last seen putting her young son to bed, then going outside onto her grandmother's front porch around midnight, April 31st, 2016. She's on the porch. Uh, she took Kyle in, laid him down, came back outside, and then next thing we knew she was gone and she was found the next day. Within hours, her body was discovered in the Ross Creek area, about 150 feet from this gravel road near a remote ATV trail. Amy Millsap tells us her niece may have met a stranger or possibly someone she knew outside, but she would never leave her son without telling anyone. That's why they believe she was taken from her front yard against her will. Um, they say she wasn't shot. They say that she was beat to death. Samantha's family says they will not rest, knowing her killer is still out there. It's gone dead cold. It's just like it's just nothing. Nothing's came back on it. No, no answers for, you know, who done this. No, no anything. 17 months has gone by and no one's sitting in jail. TBI officials disagree, telling us this case remains an active and ongoing investigation. I, I'm scared to even sometimes go out on my own, just to walk out here on my own, because you don't know who's watching you. Now, if you have any information that can help investigators, call the Grundy County Sheriff's Office or TBI. In Grundy County, Natalie Potts, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. 
And just into the newsroom, two firefighters were hurt during an explosion at a house fire today on Main Street in the Collegedale area. The explosion blew out the front windows, throwing the firefighters into the front porch railing, and they are expected to recover. OSHA is investigating Shaw Industries in Dalton, where an employee died last night. The coroner says 51-year-old Jesus Pimentel died when he was caught between two machines. Today, we are learning more about the safety history at Shaw Industries. Channel 3's Caitlin Chastain joins us live from Dalton. Caitlin, tell us what you've learned. Cindy, in the past four years, Shaw Industry has had 18 inspection reports filed through OSHA. That's according to the online database, and this includes every branch of Shaw Industries. Now, according to Shaw Industries' own 2016 sustainability report, it says the company has actually improved safety measures through training and safety committees. The report states the company's OSHA incident rate incident rate has actually improved by 40 percent since 2005. Now the plant did suspend operations today in order to investigate. Police say that that is procedure even if they do believe the death was an accident. That's a pretty standard uh, measure in a, in a case like this. Uh, there's nothing suspicious about the death obviously but uh, typically I think OSHA does an investigation of any you know workplace related death like this. A VP at Shaw Industry here tells me that they did suspend those operations today, like I said, and they hope to open them back up and start operating the plant again tomorrow morning. Right now, I'm reporting live in Dalton. Caitlin Chastain, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Caitlin, thank you. Gun crime in Chattanooga is down 45% compared to this time last year. It's been 63 days now since the last homicide in the city. Officials credit the violence reduction initiative with the drop in gang violence. So far this year, Chattanooga police are investigating 29 homicides. Last year, we saw a total of 31. And we've had 98 shooting incidents so far, 111 last year. Cahutta police are warning residents about two wild dogs that have been killing livestock. They say one of the dogs looks like a German shepherd, the other is white with brown spots. The animals are considered dangerous. Police say they killed goats and other small animals on Cahutta Varnell Road and near the Cahutta Fish Hatchery. If you see these wild dogs, call the Cahutta Police Department at the number on your screen at 706-370-4900. The Polk County Sheriff's Office is looking for the person who witnessed these vending machine thefts. Deputies say the witness is not in trouble, but they are trying to get information on the suspects. They say the suspects burglarized the machine last Monday, the 23rd, at 6.30 in the morning. If you have any information, call 423-338-8215. Coming up next, police want you to have a happy but safe Halloween night. The biggest problem that we have is sometimes kids are dressed in dark colors. Getting your kids safely to and from houses for trick-or-treating. Uh, the weather would be no problem for it tonight. As a matter of fact, uh, the weather for it tomorrow, except for just a few clouds, is going to be pretty good. I've got details about uh, some warm-up coming up into the weekend. That's all a little bit. And this is a live picture from New York City where eight people were killed and several injured due to a suspected terror attack this afternoon near the World Trade Center site. We're monitoring this breaking news and Lester Holt will have an update live from New York on NBC Nightly News in about 20 minutes.
with coverage you can count on. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 6. If you're getting your kids ready to go trick or treating, make sure their costumes are safe this Halloween. Yeah, reflective, if at all possible. Now, Channel 3's Michelle Heron talked to police about the number one problem every year and what you can do to fix it. City Hall was flooded with some of the tiniest superheroes and princesses from Siskin Children's Institute. But what these pumpkins and monsters lack in size, they make up in personality. What's your favorite kind of candy? Pink. Chattanooga Police Sergeant Wayne Jefferson says community events like this and trunk or treats are becoming more popular among parents. Rather have our, child in a, our kids in an environment that is more closed off and more safe and we can pay more attention to it. SafeKids.org reports kids are twice as likely to be hit and killed on Halloween compared to any other day of the year. Police tell Channel 3 there have not been any reports of people being hit on Halloween in Chattanooga in the last two years, and they hope for the same this year. The biggest problem that we have is sometimes kids are dressed in dark colors. Making it hard for drivers to see trick-or-treaters at night. You can go to your local hardware stores and buy reflective tape. Uh, you can actually buy the glow-in-the-dark paint if you want to. Flashlights and glow sticks also make you more visible and remind kids to watch out for drivers. You have kids walking from neighborhood to neighborhood and neighborhood and they're actually racing to get to the next good house. And kids are kids and a lot of times they don't pay attention to traffic laws. To make sure every ghost and goblin gets home safely this Halloween. In Chattanooga, Michelle Heron, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And as we reported earlier in the newscast, a child was hit by a car late this afternoon here in Chattanooga, marking the first such case in two years. This was on Dodson Avenue, and we are glad to report the child will recover. Police are looking for the driver who hit that child and drove away, and it is not clear what led to the crash, but police say many Halloween night crashes involve alcohol. Drunk drivers kill three times as many on Halloween as compared to New Year's Eve. Tomorrow, everyone will put away their pumpkins and start thinking about mm, perhaps Christmas trees. But there's one problem. After the recession come in here, we had an overabundance of trees that we wouldn't sell them. Well, we'll talk about Christmas tree prices, how much they could cost you this year. And how will the trick-or-treating go tonight weather-wise? From all indications, things are looking pretty good. And Paul Barris will tell you more when we come back. Well, tomorrow is the first day of November. 
boom, just like that. And it's out with the pumpkins, and for some, it's already in with the Christmas trees. We're going to skip over that turkey day, right? Looks that okay. way. Depending though on where you buy this holiday season, you want to be prepared because you may end up spending more. Channel 3 meteorologist Nick Austin explains. They want to go ahead and get their tree right now and set it up even though it's not Christmas. Bernie McDowell and his family have run McDowell's Big Fork Nursery since the 1970s. He grows many kinds of trees, but expects the ones perfect for Christmas to start selling soon. Usually the week before Thanksgiving, it gets, traffic gets pretty heavy. But somewhere around the 15th, middle of the month, they'll start cut fuel start coming in here. These trees take anywhere from six to 12 years to mature. That's a five footer there. The recession five. slowed business and McDowell had trouble breaking even. After the recession come in here, we had a overabundance of trees that we wasn't selling. So we had to, out of, out of necessity, we had to start selling cut trees. To, it's better to sell them at a reduced price than it was for us to have to cut them ourselves and burn them. McDowell survived the bad times, but some growers in top producing states like Oregon and North Carolina haven't been as fortunate. Low prices forced many out of business. Remaining farmers are struggling to keep up with demand. This means you might pay more for your tree depending on where you buy it. Some retailers like Ramsey Produce here in Hickson are still negotiating costs with their suppliers. The owner told Channel 3 off camera his supply will be a little smaller this year, but he's still hoping to keep prices the same as last year. Back on the nursery, the recession didn't shake McDowell's Christmas spirit. He and his staff weathered the tough times and irrigated as much as possible through last year's drought to save crops. His prices won't change. We don't anticipate going up on our prices at all. We're, we're, uh, we're doing okay, I'd say. We're not getting rich, but we're doing okay. Let's hope they continue to do okay. Nick Austin reporting. Rising costs and lower inventory in some places could raise the number of artificial trees that are purchased.